Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, you saw the title, right? You know what's going on here? I assume that's why you clicked on the video, so I don't need to do a whole long intro. Crotons, repotted this one in last week's video, had some questions coming into my DMs. That's not uncommon this time of year, generally in the winter time. I don't know when you're watching this, but I'm filming this in the winter time. When I get the most questions about the crotons, that's typically because this is when the crotons as a house plant, they just, really aren't the most well-behaved for some people. Interesting plant. One of these plants where some people, they grow flawlessly, no issues, and other people just keep buying them and they die. They buy another one, they die. It just, the cycle goes on and on and on. This video is for those of you who just keep buying them and they keep dying. That's maybe why you're here, right? So the crotons, just general care, very broad care, because there are a lot of different types of crotons. I'll go ahead and get the quick care popped up here on the screen. Feel free to take a screenshot of it. Crotons like a good amount of light, not necessarily afternoon sun, depending on the variety. They like a well-drained, organically rich soil that holds on to an okay amount of moisture, but it still needs to dry fast enough that the plant's not going to rot away when you bring it inside for the winter time. Fertilize monthly during the growing season with an all-purpose fertilizer. I also amend the soil with organics like compost, earthworm, Avoid hot or cold drafts, just any type of strong winds on the leaves can cause some brown edges and some tips, just makes the plant overall unhappy. Be careful not to overpot them, they are prone to rotting out, root rot, so you don't want too much excess soil in their containers. Never let the container sit in a tray of water, it'll just wick it back up cause issues with rot. That's about it. It's a fairly straightforward plant, or so you would think. Growing these plants indoors is not the same as having them outside. I know a lot of you all, like me, take your plants outside during the warmer parts of the year and bring them back in, and they have to hang out inside when it's cooler outside. Below 40 is when I bring mine in. I, it'd be more advisable to say 50 degrees Fahrenheit, but honestly, 40 has always been fine. I've seen these growing places where they get frost sometimes, they defoliate and come back. So uh, my, my plant's nice and big though. So if it loses some leaves, not a big deal. It'll grow back. If you just have some sticks in a little 10 inch container, go ahead and bring it in just to be safe. Don't let it go below 50. In the winter time, I would say the main cause of issues with this plant from what I'm hearing from people is more than likely overwatering. That's not to make anybody feel bad. It's not necessarily that you're overwatering the plant, but I think what the potential issue here is that the plant is in a soil that's holding onto moisture for too long. If you picked your croton up from a big box store, more than likely it's in that cocoa peat mix, which is fine for the propagators, people who are growing them out. It makes sense for them to use that. That cocoa peat, coconut core is what that is. It holds onto a lot of moisture. It drains just fine, and I don't have issues with that during the summer when it's nice and warm outside. Sure, it's gonna hold on to moisture, but it's warm out, so that's going to evaporate fairly fast. It's not gonna sit around those roots. Like here, for example, this is, well, it was a peperomia. Ever impulse buy a plant and then you forgot about it, leave it in your car, and then it freezes? Don't worry, I think it's gonna be okay. It still has some nice sturdy nubs in there. It happened, I think the peperomia will be okay. But this is what I'm talking about here. It's almost like a sand very commonly used by the growers to grow these plants out. Once you water this, it can stay wet for a pretty long time. Of course, there are gonna be variables, depends on how humid your climate is, how much airflow there is in the room. We have fairly dry winters here, where I am in St. Louis, and uh, that stuff still, it'll stay wet for like a week and a half to two weeks. And the common denominator with the people who are asking me about the issues with the plants, mainly that, they're dropping leaves and there's some yellowing that that generally means that the plant's been overwatered. If the plant's thirsty, the leaves just wilt down. You give it a drink, they'll pop back up if it's not getting enough water. But if those leaves are wilting down and it's dropping leaves and the soil's moist, chances are it needs better drainage. My advice would be to go ahead and repot the plant into just a standard all-purpose potty mix that drains well with something with some texture in it, something that has the sand and maybe some chunks of bark and perlite. Something that'll make it light and fluffy. That'll make it so the plant doesn't need to be watered as often. In the winter time, I do not typically water my crotons all that often, especially when they're in the house. Out here in the grow space, it's fairly warm. So like once a week is about right, especially now that this has been repotted. Its old container is like three times a week because it needed more soil. But otherwise, I let the crotons go more on the dry side during the winter months. And if the leaves wilt down, then I know I've gone too long. Obviously we wanna try and avoid that happening when water them before that happens, but I would rather err on the side of needing to rehydrate the plants and save it from rot. Rot seems to be the culprit for what's going on with the majority of these that are just dropping dead on people. It'd be fairly easy to advise to just water the plant less, right? Not really. Water less frequently, sure. 
that makes sense. But as far as the saturation goes for the soil, for that potting mix, it needs to be even. So uh, it's not the kind of plant where I would say just give it a splash of water and walk away. The water doesn't need to go all the way through there. If the potting mix stays too wet, then it, you have a die off of lots of good beneficial bacteria and an excess of other types of bacteria you don't want. And then if the soil dries out too much, then you're losing all kinds of good beneficial microorganisms that are in the soil. So slightly moist to dry is where I would go with that for overall just better root health of the plant. The soil shouldn't get bone dry. With these coconut mixes, really don't have a lot of middle ground. These tend to be either bone dry or fully saturated sopping wet, which is great for some plants. It makes a lot of sense for things like spathophyllums and some ferns, as long as it's nice and airy. You don't have to worry about the rot as much. The crotons, no, it's, that's a bad idea. It's just asking for trouble. Get them into a mix that's going to drain more quickly and that's nice, light, and airy. Or that might mean you have to water the plant more often during the growing season when you have the plant outdoors or just when the day lengths are longer and maybe it's a little bit warmer in the home. I would prefer to have to water the plant a little bit more frequently during the growing season than have the plant just rot away on me because I watered it like twice in a month during the winter time right? That, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, but let's say the plant already seems like it's kind of far gone. Give the plant a slight trim if it's already dropped leaves and maybe you don't need to worry about that. Give that soil a nice smell. If anything smells foul, then I would wash the soil out completely, spray those roots down with some hydrogen peroxide, and then uh, rinse that out and pot it up into a better mix. Otherwise, the next option is to, when you water, just give it a little drink, wait for it to come down to the bottom of the pot, and then let that be it. You can try watering them from the bottom. Might be an option, but I wouldn't let it sit in a tray of water for very long, like probably no more than a couple of hours to wick the water up, and that would be about it. Always fun when you're trying to tell someone how to grow a plant and you say something like, they like consistent moisture. Oh, but make sure you let them dry out a little bit during the winter time. What? Under average household conditions, if temperatures are below, say, 74 Fahrenheit, something like that, and the plant's not getting natural sunlight or it's not underneath a whole bunch of really bright grow bulbs. You just can't expect the plant to utilize all that water that's being given to it. They're in conditions where they just want to chill out. Without the warmer temperatures and the light, nothing signaling to the plant to go ahead and push out new growth, meaning it's not going to pull up water at the same rate that it would when it's outdoors. So there's no reason to flood the plant with tons and tons of water or to let it sit in a potting mix like this down here, like this coconut core that's going to hold on to moisture for a couple of weeks. That's probably too long. There are tons of other issues that can arise, but just from my experience, after having lots and lots and lots of people ask me about crotons over the years and send me pictures of theirs, like I said, the common denominator just seems to be too much water. There's always the potential of nitrogen deficiencies. If you notice yellow wings starting around the lower portions of the leaves and working its way up, then that could be a thing. Easy to fix, fertilize the plant, maybe get it, give it some fresh soil. Not always that easy to notice deficiencies on a plant that has all these different colors on it. So if yours already has a lot of yellow on it, that might throw you off some, but you'll notice that just the overall health of those yellow leaves looks different. It's not going to have the same stiffness to it. it might seem a little bit more thin and brittle. The less light the plant's getting, the less warmth it's getting, the less water it needs. AQTC. It's not a plant I'd follow a watering schedule with. That watering schedules in general, I'm not generally a fan of unless like all of your plants are all the same and they just happen to all get thirsty at the same time then sure, maybe. Just watch the plant and stick your fingers down in the soil, see if it feels dry or moist, and then just gauge it off of that. I would suppose if I had to give a number, because people really like really precise information with these things, even though that makes it tricky because growing plants is not the same for anybody because we all have different environments. I don't want to say like, let the soil dry out 50% and then water it because that's all relative to your environment. I don't know your humidity. I don't know if you have drafts. I, I don't know what's going on where you live. So I would say the better rule of thumb would be pay close attention to the plant, see when the leaves start to droop. That means it's thirsty, water it, and then gauge how long it takes <laughs> until it starts to do it again. And after that, you can water it a day or two earlier than whatever that time span was. So if it took 10 days for it to start to wilt and seem thirsty, then I'll water it on day eight or nine just to be safe. Smaller plants, you can just pick them up. 
feel the soil. You'll be able to tell the difference between a plant that has a nice moist soil and a plant that's dry. Might take you a few times, but you'll figure it out. Catch on, after you water the plant, you'll feel that it has that heft in it, and then you go back to pick it up a few days later. If it feels more dry and the soil even looks different, a nice light brown color, probably needs some water. Moisture meters, I, I could talk a long time about moisture meters. If you use a lot of synthetic fertilizers, a lot of fertilizers that are carried with salts, then uh, I would advise using moisture meters as something, just take the reading with a grain of salt, still check it with your fingers, still pay attention to the color, to the heft of the soil. Moisture meters work by conductivity. If there's a lot of salt buildup in the container, well then one, you probably need to flush it out because the plant might not appreciate that. But two, it can throw off the results from the moisture meter. And the probes need to be kept clean. They start to get corroded over time and you need to replace them every so often. There's, there's a lot that goes into the moisture meters. It's a fun thing to do. I get it, especially when you're trying to learn. Try and connect in the beginning of what your moisture meter is saying with what your brain is seeing and observing too. Then eventually you won't need the moisture meter anymore. You'll be able to say, okay, well, this was at a four when it looked like this, and then it was at a two when the plant looked like this, and the soil felt like that. The dots will connect. To let y'all know, these plants drop leaves sometimes. Sometimes they're just babies about being moved. Little changes can cause them to drop leaves. I've noticed the older mine has gotten, the longer I've had it, the less finicky it's getting and the less it's just dropping leaves all over the place. But when this plant was smaller, when it was like, I'd say up until about four feet tall, I'd move it across the patio and it was just like, hell no. I just started dropping leaves. Wasn't having it. I move it inside, drop leaves. Move it outside, drop leaves. Not really doing that anymore, but it's it's gotten a lot bigger. So maybe it just, it has more to sustain. I don't really know what would have changed there, but just thought I'd throw that out there. As long as the stems aren't mushy, I wouldn't worry about it. And the soil's not doing all the stuff I was talking about with like smells and being too wet. I wouldn't worry about it. It's probably just throwing a little bit of a fit. Make sure it's getting plenty of light and that it's not getting any cold drafts or anything like that. That's another thing. With the moisture that I meant to mention earlier in the video, is again prone to rot. So if the soil's wet and there's a cold draft moving around it, then that's, well, that's just a recipe for disaster. And then one final consideration that I think is probably the culprit of what's been an issue for most people is to consider soil temperature. Rotans, tropical plants. They like it warm and the house not warm. Even if you put it in a warm spot, if the soil is consistently moist, doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. This is reading 76.4 at the surface. I don't, I have a soil thermometer that actually goes down inside the, so I, I don't know where it is. Nice and toasty, a croton would be perfectly happy with that. Thing is, you get this wet and you let this cocoa core, cocoa peat stuff soak that in, it's gonna cool down. You would think moist soil would be more on the cool end, right? Mm, yes and no. In the ground, that's not actually the case. The soil being dry doesn't have as much insulation to it, but there is the evaporative cooling to keep in mind. But if you look at that, 70, okay. Of course, brings the temperature down some, and that's fairly significant. Something to take into consideration, but it's not like, what are you gonna do about that? You can't not water the plant, that's not gonna work. You have to think about where is the plant sitting? What is it sitting on? I, in my house, I have a garden window countertop that the plants sit on top of cold. It's really chilly. The plants don't like it. I have to use seedling mats underneath everything to keep them warm or put them onto pot lifters to lift them up. So whatever's going on in the container temperature wise is going to be about the same as the room temperature. This is sitting down on a cool surface and those colder temperatures can wick up around the base of that pot cooling things down. Here in the grow space you can't well you can't really see it. Over there there's a floor over there. See it? It's shiny. Underneath the plants and the leaves that's a floor. It's styrofoam. Styrofoam because I don't want the plants sitting on the concrete. That cold is just gonna wick right up into the plants. Cool the roots down, slow their growth down, and then that's going to increase any risk that they have towards rot. So yeah, lift the plant up, put it on top of something. I wouldn't use like a pebble tray or anything with water in it. That's not probably going to help anything as maybe it will as long as the plant's not actually sitting in the water, which it never should be. It's a kombucha warmer. You can take it, wrap it around your drawers, if you're, you know, making the tea, or you can wrap it around pottery as long as it's not plastic. I don't think you're supposed to wrap around plastic pots. I know I had before and it was fine. Or you can just set the pot right on top of it. Boom, you've got some nice warmth around the base of the plant. I would imagine any croton is going to appreciate supplemental heating, especially supplemental gentle heating. And if you have a larger plant, obviously something like this probably isn't gonna do the trick. You can just use heat mats that are made for seedlings. Getting some extra warmth around the base of the plants, especially a plant like a croton, 
more than likely going to make a difference. If you've been struggling with them, but you feel like you're doing everything right, watering correctly, and like if you let them dry out for any longer than you are, then the plant's going to suffer. If you, you just can't quite find the balance, then maybe consider adding in some supplemental heat. It's not going to hurt anything. The worst case scenario would be that this but that looks scary, like it was gonna fall, something bad's gonna happen. It's all right, it's not plugged in. Worst case scenario, the plant's super happy and you have to water it more often because that warmth is keeping it in a more active growth. That's not so bad, not a terrible thing. That's gonna do it. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciate it. I can only remember so many things in the videos, so if you came here trying to learn something and hit on it, check on the comments. Somebody down there may have provided something really useful. A great community here with the plant people. All the plant nerds are always chipping in, helping each other learn. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.